Hey friends, Dr. Motley here, and today I wanted to talk to you about group strep B, Streptococcus agalactae. I had a lot of good messages, a lot of good questions asking me to cover this particular strain of strep because it's pretty common in our world today. It's very antibiotic resistant. So you see, not only pregnant women have it, but men and children. In fact, it's all over the world. You see more strains of this infection that's very resistant to antibiotics taking more of a hold in our culture causing a lot of the symptoms of strep, such as swollen lip nodes, itchy sore throats, rashes around the chest, overall malaise and fatigue. And when you see it in children, you'll see symptoms such as swollen forehead, chronic ear infections, eye infections, chronic stuffy nose, and congestion that won't leave even a small baby. So we're gonna cover a few questions. We're gonna ask, what is it? Where does it come from? Can you pass it on to a partner or can it be transferred to a baby through pregnancy? And then we're going to talk about some of the extra symptoms uh, that are associated with your spine and with the organ system, with your emotions. And then we're going to finish it off like how can we work to get rid of it? So I want to start off with what is it? There's about 10 identifiable strains of Streptococcus B that the Western allopathic world works with. Now, I've had individuals come into the office, men, women, and children, that have shown positive tests for strep B, and thankfully through the use of herbals and spices, after they got retested, they show no more signals or signs or symptoms or blood work that have it in their body. Now, strep B is pretty common because of where it's found. So, first of all, let's ask, what is it? It's a gram-positive bacteria, streptococcus. It's a round-shaped bacteria that has a certain type of membrane that gives it the gram-positive identification. Now, it becomes really resistant to antibiotics because of this um, outer shell, but also because of its genetic capabilities, which we'll talk about in just a little bit. So it's gram-positive, and it's usually found within 25% of pregnant women. Many times they don't even know they have it until they go get a urinalysis test before they have the baby. So you'll see many individuals, or many ladies that have it, and don't even know it. Now, it's one of those bacteria, guys, that's a natural inhabitant of the large intestine. Have you ever heard of SIBO? SIBO means small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So Streptococcus B is in the large intestine. What it does metabolically is helps you break down your poop. It basically runs a few metabolic processes to help you digest and get rid of that fecal matter so that you can eliminate properly. Other infections or other bacterial inoculation is present within the large intestine, such as E. coli, other forms of strep, staphylococcus, Klebsiella, even um, Clostridium are all found within the large intestine. Now the problem is guys, in our culture today, we've been fed a lot of sugar, we've been fed a lot of milk, a lot of dairy, a lot of grains, a lot of GMOs, and we'll talk about that this month, the SIBO effect, is that when this occurs, it actually can weaken the ileocecal valve. That's one of the main organs. It's the passageway between the large intestine, or between the small intestine to the large intestine. So whenever you have high amounts of sugar, high amounts of carbs and starches, and trans fats, what it does is it can weaken the digestive system. It can give you an issue called leaky gut. We've talked about that before. Now, if you have inflammation in this digestive lining, it makes the pores and cracks open up and get larger within the small intestine, allowing like unused food, food particles and infections to slip through the small intestine and right directly into the portal blood system, the arteries around your intestines. So what happens is you have this form of strep B within the large intestine, and it can actually migrate back through that ileocecal valve, the little tube, because it's not strong, it's weak, and that infection can pass through the tube back in to the small intestine, which is like a backflow mechanism. When that occurs, the strep B could actually go through the cracks, through the large pores of the small intestine, and jump into the bloodstream and go systemic. So you have this bacteria that's going all over the body. Depending where it lands, we don't know, but it could make its way into the reproductive area because why? The blood system right down there is right near each other. So you can find it where it can get to the ovaries, it can get into the testes of men, it can get into the uterus, the vagina, into the rectal areas, into the scrotum, even into the male organs. Basically, it can spread through this area and then what happens is it adheses to the area and it can actually multiply, creating biofilms, its own goo to where it can hide in there and get very sticky and it sticks to these areas. Depending, it could get into the heart, it can get to the throat, but we're going to talk about how it gets into this reproductive area. So that's what it is. So if you have a normal inhabitant of the large intestine, it moves back through into the small intestine. and can spread systemically. It has a greater chance of getting into what? The reproductive area. 
And remember, they are there just to what? Reproduce and multiply. What do they eat? Sugars, starches, carbs. So you have to reduce your carbs and your sugars if you want to have a good chance of getting rid of strep B. Number one, stop eating excess sugar. Okay, that's a side note. So that's what it is. Gram-positive streptococcus, it's a normal inhabitant of the large intestine. It can spread through sugars and leaky gut and get to other areas. Now, can you pass it on to a partner? Well, it's not classified as a sexually transmitted disease, but it can be transmitted through sexual contact. If you think about it, if it gets into the reproductive areas and it is actually multiplying, it can basically be transferred. Now, the thing is, when you think about it being sexually transmitted, you think about having like a really seriously like detrimental effect on a person, but most people don't even know they have it. Remember, pregnant women don't even know when they have it. Men especially don't know they even have it until they get specific testing for it. So sometimes they go out, go on without symptoms. They're just carriers of it. And most people live healthy lives with group strep B. But at times when these heavy symptoms come up, like if you have chronic sore throat or the lymph nodes or even chronic swollen lymph nodes around the growing area, or if you have chronic tender belly ache right underneath the navel, in Chinese medicine, it has a lot to do with the bladder, or if you have anywhere above the belly button, that's a small intestine, and if you have on the sides of the abdomen, that's the ileocecal valve or the valve of Houston. These are areas that can be infected and chronically have that group strep B within it. So with this migration and this inoculation within these areas, can you pass it through fluids? Yes. I've seen many patients come in that have um, signals and signs and symptoms of this infection within the reproductive area. Now, this is not to be negative. We can actually clean this out because there's many infections that can be transmitted through sexual contact or through saliva. The list goes on and on. So don't be discouraged. But can it be transferred then to a child? Well, they say that even through natural birth, what happens is the baby goes through the, um, the opening. As it goes through, it can actually swallow some of the mucosa from the mother, which could contain some of the strep B. So that's why they'll give a mother like penicillin or erythromycin as they're about to have the baby so they can kill it off so the baby does, has a very low chance of getting the infection. But it can be transferred that way. And even in C-sections, they say if the water breaks, that there's a way that the bacteria can actually inoculate after the water's broken when the baby's exposed. So they say that when babies get it, there's a 1% to 2% chance that it can be very, very infected. And that's when 1% to 2%, according to research, where individual or babies die. If a child has it, and you didn't have it, but your child does, it could come from what? Dairy. Dairy, cow milk and cow dairies have been shown to group, call, uh, carry group strep B. And if there's a normal inhabitant within the digestive tract and your child eats a lot of sugars, it could overgrow. So that's one explanation if you don't have it, but your baby does. So don't be discouraged. If you did, unfortunately, pass it on, you can always help clean it up and the baby can be cleaned up too. So these are the, some of the mechanisms. Can it be passed on? Yes. Can it be done by sexual contact? Yes. Can it be passed on from mother to, to child? Yes. But there's hope. So when we have this effect, I want to tell you a couple other symptoms. So if uh, you think about Chinese medicine and kinesiology, whenever you're talking about the ovaries or the reproductive organs having these infections, what you'll find is that the reproductive organs in men and women are associated with the G medius, which are the side hip muscles, the lower abdominals, and the butt muscles, the glutes. So you can have chronic pain within the hips or the lower abdominals or the glutes. So if you have this and you have swollen lip nodes around the inguinal areas, around the growing area, and if you've ever thought you've had like women have like cyst or a fibroid pain or tumors or fibroid cyst within the area or had a history of it, you can have infections that may be contributing to the pain or getting into the cyst and actually causing more pain down there. These are all physical signs and symptoms, which means this, those muscles can get weak and cause the pelvis to go out of alignment, which then what? Causes force to be transferred up the spine in a corkscrew effect, causing pain within the lower neck and the jaws and the upper neck. So you can have your pelvis getting misaligned because you have an infection causing these muscles around those organs to be weak because why? Organs that are chronically, chronically infected will do what? Aggravate the nerves and those nerves are also connected to muscles around the hips, causing the pelvis to go out of alignment, causing pain and stiffness and transitions up through the neck and the spine. So you have all these areas of your spine that are sore and tender which can cause joint pain in the extremities all from an infection. Chemically, remember, High histamine responses can occur, allergies can occur, you can have chronic diarrhea, chronic constipation, all different, all different uh, symptoms within the digestive tract because of how an out of 
um, out of balance, strep B uh, level can actually affect other bacterial levels, which can cause you the, give you the constipation or the um, diarrhea. So you have these type of symptoms that go on. So look at your digestive system. Look at your, if women look at your periods, if you have different types of spotting or if you have different types of flow, these can all be different effects of group strep B. Emotionally, the ovaries, the testes, the reproductive organs are very much associated with being depleted emotionally, non-thinking, non-emotive, not having an emotion, feeling insufficient. These are all emotions that could be related to the strep B. So we can get these treated with doing acupuncture points for the pericardium, the triple warmer, the circulation sex meridian. These all help with helping cleanse the reproductive organ. Now, there's other ways that we can help instead of just antibiotics. This is a very long post, but I want to go through this. We can also help with the original things I've talked about. Golden thread, Mirinda, neem powder. Remember about the steps. You find the one that resonates with you, and if it helps you go to the restroom well, helps you sleep well, and get overall energy, that's the one for you. Now, ask your primary care physician or your holistic practitioner to find one, but I've seen even young children, when you find like Vital Guard, which is good for young children, if you do it in like some applesauce or some good almond yogurt, if you give this to little ones, I've seen it work really well in clearing out the strep B. But these supplements I've seen work well in helping get rid of the symptoms and signs and the levels of group strep B in individuals. Now, if you want to know what about the antibiotics, the problem is there's two mechanisms. This is what happens. In group strep B, they're very resistant to penicillin or erythromycin because on the outer shell, they have what they have certain genes, which I wrote about in the post. And these genes give the uh, actual bacteria the capability of changing the sites that are very sensitive to the uh, macrolides. Macrolides are basically certain types of antibacterial um, uh, agents that are given off by another bacterial species. Uh, I think they're actinomyces. Actinomyces are different types of bacterial groups or families. They give off antibacterial, antibacterial agents. So bacteria can be used to get other bacteria. Well, the bacteria has the ability through genetic um, modifications to change the binding sites that that macrolide can come in and hit on that actual uh, receptor site and change the protein synthesis within the bacteria. So you need protein synthesis to what? Build tissue and grow and live. But if you have that agent that can actually bind to the site and disrupt the protein synthesis, the b bacteria will die. But the bacteria is smart enough. It can change the binding site and not allow that the, the macrolides, the erythromycin, because erythromycin is made out of macrolides, that antibacterial agent. So if it can change the receptor site, the macrolide can't attach or the erythromycin doesn't work, so it becomes resistant. And there are certain, I mean, the group B strep, there's 10 different strains, but there are certain strains that can actually change, basically, itself so that it's not sensitive to the, what, catalytic activity of the PBPs, of penicillin binding proteins. You know, penicillin is used to kill off bacteria, but it can change itself to be resistant. I want to go through this guy with even more depth, but I may do this more on a story, but this is fascinating about these two um, mechanisms. Now, I put it in on the post, or so read more about it, but there's not enough time. It's a very long post. So these are the ways that you can actually see how it's very resistant. What can we do? You can try the Golden Thread, Vital Guard, Mirinda, Noni. You can check these out and see if these can actually resonate and start to clean these things out of your system. When it does, you may have a little more flushing. Some women have more spotting. Sometimes you have more bowel movements, but you can flush these things out. And even I've seen young children do well. Also, good homeopathics. Good streptococcus homeopathics like, like from companies like Desbio, uh, from professional formulas, actually help really well with this type of infection. Guys, this has been a lot of info, but I hope this helps. Remember, stick with those supplements. See which one resonates with you. Ask your primary care if you have any questions. Guys, it's been a long talk. It's almost 15 minutes, but I want you to know you can get rid of it if you try these different types of supplements. You know, one at a time, start slow. Look at my other strep videos. Check it out and see if it works for you. But this is a basic explanation. You can help you. You can help your children. You can help your family. Hope you have a good one. Love y'all.